Hi, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a former president of the North American Menopause Society, and I am thrilled today to be joined by Dr. Tara Allman. Welcome. I feel welcome, thank you. So tell us who you are. I'm Dr. Tara Allman, board certified gynecologist, author of Menopause Confidential, and I am thrilled to be talking to you about the latest rap about the pap. So lots of confusion because guidelines have changed all over North America, and that's left a lot of people sort of not quite sure why they've changed and how they follow these guidelines. So you give us that wrap. Let's clear it up. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force has recently come out with the latest guidelines on cervical testing for cervical cancer. So let's break it down by age. I do want your viewers to know that this group is an independent volunteer group of national experts right on both prevention and evidence-based medicine. And I think that as healthcare providers, that is where we are turning. So tell our healthcare providers the bottom line. Okay, so we're going to do cervical cancer screening on women starting at the age of 21 to the age of 65. This is for average risk women for cervical cancer. If you are less than the age of 21, you should not have cervical cancer screening, and this has been a guideline for many years, so that hasn't changed. Something has changed. Let's break it down for the 21 to 29-year-old group. They should have just PAP testing, not HPV testing. That shows the greatest benefit and the, less, the least harm for cervical cancer screening. Now the 30 to 65-year-old group should have either PAP testing alone every three years, PAP testing with HPV every five years, or the latest information is they can have HPV testing alone every five years. These are the three strategies that we have for the 30 to 65 year old group of average risk women. And now let's talk about the over 65 crowd. Right, so let's talk about that because in some parts of North America, for example in Canada, we advise screening all the way up to age 70. Why not here? The task force found that the average risk woman who makes it to 65 with adequate screening, and by definition that means three normal pap tests within the last two years, 10 years, or two normal pap and HPV co-tests within right. the last 10 years, and the most recent one being within five years. If you make it to 65 in that group, then your risk of cervical cancer is practically zero. So the harm now become, outweighs the benefit over the age of 65, even if your over 65 year old becomes newly sexually active and has a new partner. So it, it, it's great for them to have a new partner. You shouldn't restart pap testing in that group if they do have a new and partner. That's, that's so, a very important so, point. So important because often for many of these women, if they do have a lot of estrogen depletion, you sometimes can get a few atypical cells that are a function of the estrogen depletion as opposed to something more ominous. Yeah, this, th these guidelines are, are based in real evidence and we really all should adhere to the guidelines, but I would like to say that clinical judgment, of course, should be involved. So if you have a patient that is in, in a different category of risk, if they are immunocompromised, if they have been DES exposed in utero, if they've had a precancerous lesion or cervical cancer, they don't fall into these guidelines. Right. And in fact, here's a very important point. If you've had a patient with CIN one or two, or th not one, two or three, within the last 20 years and now she's over 65, she should still have screening for 20 years, even if it puts her over the 65 year age group. That's the exception for women who should continue to right. be screened if they were CIN one or two within 20 years. Now, let's talk about the fact that we are trying to move both young boys and girls into getting, and, and young adults, into HPV vaccinations. How will that change the future of the next wrap on the PAP when we next get together? Where is my crystal ball? I don't so, know, where's mine? <laughs> so the research on that is not yet out and available for us. So the guidelines today for the six to four, I'm sorry, the nine to 14 year olds mm -hmm. is HPV vaccination. There are two doses in that schedule, right. six months apart. If you are 15 to 26, the dosing schedule is three doses that are within a year. And we don't yet know if people who have been HPV vaccinated, if their schedule for cervical cytology screening is going to change. 
We don't know that. So well, they we, still have to be on the guidelines. We have some world data that's showing the impact that we are seeing less abnormal PAPs, but not enough to change the guidelines Correct. at the present time. So everyone, now you know the latest wrap about the PAP. There you go. As healthcare <laughs> providers, we are up to wrap speed. Thank Beautiful. you so much. My pleasure.